love to offer a few thoughts to stimulate and challenge our thinking. We've spent quite a bit of time painting a clear vision of the future we want as individuals, as businesses, as national and global societies. So key question that we must now ask ourselves is what's likely to get in the way? Here we are embarked on the ship of life. We've charted our journey to a glorious destination that we've envisioned. The next step is to ensure that the ship is not scuppered on the way by icebergs that are lurking below the surface, hidden from view. Now, these icebergs tend to be of two kinds. The first uh, is uh, outworn mindsets that lurk in the recesses of our psyches, unconsciously driving our behaviors. These mindsets largely consist of attitudes, perspectives, and interpretations born of unexamined limiting beliefs, false assumptions, and interpretations that end up constituting our conceptual framework. Then we have our dysfunctional habits, the second kind of iceberg. Our mindsets tend to spawn behaviors that ossify over time into habits that then become culture when they're adopted by large groups of people over a long enough period of time. So if we don't want to repeat the mistakes of the past and have our future be a repeat of our past, we need to harness the power of choice to identify and avoid these destructive icebergs. So I'd like to focus our attention today on one particular destructive mindset and the dysfunctional habit that flows from it. The old mindset is um, that the ends justify the means. We see this old mindset, this belief operating at all levels of life. We see it in our individual and family life. We carry it from there to the workplace. We see it in business, and then we carry it from there to our governing institutions. So even if our goals are well-intentioned, the results of using equally, unequally worthy means are usually extremely harmful. Yet we justify the harm done along the way on the grounds that the benefit of the end results excuses such harm. A typical behavior that then results from this mindset is acting on the basis of expediency and short-termism. Now, what are the characteristics of, of expediency? They are essentially, firstly, that we are reactive. We tend to lurch from crisis to crisis, failing to anticipate challenges in advance. So for instance, the, uh, our leaders around the world and the global community failed to heed warnings about an airborne virus that would move from animals to human and cause a global pandemic. We were warned about this for a long time, and yet, we fail to anticipate it and take the necessary steps to be prepared for it. The second characteristic is that we make decisions that yield short-term benefits based on narrow self-interest. As a result, the third characteristic is that we never get to the root of any problem. The embers of a problem are always left burning, waiting for the winds of circumstance to blow and to ignite the flames again. Also, our uh, solutions tend to sow the seeds of the next disaster, and our solutions are also incongruent with each other. So uh, a wonderful example is uh, what happened in uh, Afghanistan when the West decided that we wanted to dislodge the Soviets from Afghanistan. We decided to arm the Mujahideen and send them in. We were very successful in the short term. We, we uh, arrived at our short term goal of getting rid of the Soviets. However, that solution spawned the seeds of the next disaster. We created the Taliban and we know the story after that. We've been mired in war ever since. And Afghanistan has been a, a country mired in conflict and, and basically destruction for all these years. So that's uh, uh, an example. So. The new idea that I want to propose here is that if we don't want to repeat the same problems of the past, we need to replace this old mindset that the ends justify the means with the new one that says the means must be as worthy as the goal. This is really, really important. Adopting this new mindset frees us up to be proactive. We are able to assess at any given time where we are, envision where we want to be, and determine the direction in which we're headed and correct course accordingly. In other words, we're able to see the end in the beginning and take appropriate steps in anticipation. 
We also take into account broader interests of humanity as a whole, rather than catering solely to the interests of a narrow group. Another really important result is that we substitute a principled approach for expediency. What do we mean by that? We mean three things. We end up identifying a set of common principles or goals or global ethics, different terms that get us to the same place in advance. We do this because we recognize that these are law, that there are laws that govern our social existence just as there are laws that govern our physical existence, like the law of gravity. And although we can choose to ignore these laws, we do so at our peril. Just as we wouldn't dream of building an airplane without taking into account the law of gravity, so too building institutions at any level, failing to take into account these principles means that these uh, institutions are going to unravel as we're seeing around the world today. Two uh, key principles or values that we must begin with are oneness, the oneness of human beings and nations, and the second is the principle of justice and equity. So having identified them, the, we then must achieve consensus around them, and then number three, apply them methodically and without compromise. Now, an idea that is intimately uh, and inextricably really connected with this new mindset is, um, uh, the idea that we must have a growth orientation as opposed to an outcome orientation. So we humans tend to get very fixated on goals. We're very attached to achieving them and we end up tying our self-worth, whether as individual or as businesses or as nations, uh, we tend to tie our self-worth and identity to whether or not we achieve these, self, uh, these goals that we've set for ourselves. This changes once we come to understand that the purpose of life is growth. Indeed, it's not only the purpose, it is the law of life. At any given moment, we're either progressing or retrogressing. Once we understand then that life is not about arrival at a destination, but about the quality of the journey, then we can settle into this new mindset that the means must be as worthy as the goal. What then, some of you may ask, is the role of goals? Well, they are merely a mechanism by which we harness and direct our energy in service of our growth and the achievement of our life's purpose. They determine the direction in which we set our course by identifying a worthy destination, and they keep our motivation going. They keep us energized. So once we've set a goal, really the question we should be focused on is, Am I, or are we as a business, or a country, nation, learning and growing? Another crucial component of the new um, mindset is redefining our concept of success. Success is no longer to be defined as the achievement of certain outcomes or goals, but rather as the progressive realization of a worthy goal. This is such an empowering definition. It means that even if we fail to meet goals, we've learned something of value from the experience and we can always look for those opportunities to have grown and learned. The beauty of this approach is it changes our relationship to failure. We wake up to a deep spiritual truth that there is no such thing as failure. Things just are. And they always provide us an opportunity to learn and grow no matter the circumstances or outcomes. Consequently, we free up so much energy that is otherwise sucked up by anxiety, fear, avoidance of action or indecision and dithering. Our lives become more joyful and productive, whether in business or in government or in our individual and family lives. And we tend to see a wider array of possibilities before us. These are the thoughts that I wanted to share with you. I look forward to engaging in conversation with you um, in this next period. Uh, uh, uh.